An update to a story we've reported on before. The nonprofit that owns the Huntington Place Apartments in Brooklyn Park is facing thousands of dollars worth of fines for failure to complete work orders. Sarah Tamer reports on the city's plan to take action. The reason we're talking about this project tonight is because we have been hearing a growing concerns around what's going on at Huntington. At a Brooklyn Park City Council meeting Monday night, the Huntington Place apartments were top priority. I'm not exactly sure where to start. Aon, the nonprofit that owns the Huntington Place, council members and residents were at the meeting to discuss living conditions. This is how we live. Earlier in June, our cameras went inside some of the buildings where residents say for months they've raised concerns about mold, holes in ceilings, among other issues but nothing was done to address them. Because of these um, failures, the, we will be issuing a number of fines towards Anne to um, encourage them to get on top of these repairs. After multiple complaints from residents, the bathroom has this giant hole in the ceiling. Aon now faces up to $10,000 worth of fines from the city for failing to complete work orders. City officials say Aon received $2.2 million of the $6 million it could access through existing loan agreements. They will not be able to continue to get reimbursements unless they're in compliance with that loan, those loan documents. Council members, some visibly upset. When the hell is the money going to get spent? Question how the money is prioritized. It breaks my heart that people have to continue to come to us and ask us to help with them, help with this and help with this and help with this. We've given six million dollars. I know because I work at the county that we've given three and a half million dollars. We last reported Aon having 336 open maintenance requests. Aon representatives didn't get specific but had this to say at Monday's meeting. Things are changing. But there isn't a day goes by that I don't think we should be changing faster. Uh, we have an obligation. We will do our best to fulfill it. Alan, I hear you say that you and Aeon uh, are doing the best that you can. But I'll just tell you that it's just not good enough. In Brooklyn Park, Sarah Tamer, CCX News. City council members say they'd like to continue meeting with both Aeon and residents to come up with solutions. Brooklyn Park has launched a nationwide search for a new police chief. Chief Craig Envelson has served Brooklyn Park for 31 years, including nine years as chief. His last day is Wednesday. Brooklyn Park City Manager Jay Strobel will lead the search. We're looking for our, our next chief uh, to be somebody who can effectively uh, work with the community, especially our diverse community here in Brooklyn Park, somebody who can continue uh, working on building that public trust between police and community. Strobel's goal is to give a candidate recommendation to the city council by the end of August. A new state office aims to close economic gaps with communities of color. Tuesday in Brooklyn Park, the state's Department of Employment and Economic Development visited ACER, a Brooklyn Park nonprofit that works to advance the needs of African immigrants. To help in that effort, the state has formed the new Office of Public Engagement. The goal is to increase outreach to diverse communities and reduce job disparities. Local agencies like ACER say those disparities grew significantly during the pandemic. And even with the state's low unemployment rate now, communities of color are still grappling with finding good paying jobs. So even though we have a low unemployment rate uh, within our state, I'm not sure that people are really being connected with the right jobs that can pay them a livable wage where people can be able to make ends meet. Our communities are still struggling even with this uh, so-called very low unemployment rate. The new state office will also work to decrease gaps with veterans as well as persons with disabilities. The state's largest school district approved a new budget, one that district officials say will help meet rising costs and growing student enrollment. The Anoka Hennepin School Board approved a nearly $600 million budget, an increase of more than $28 million. The budget includes an increase of 14 full-time teachers due to a projected rise in enrollment. In addition, nearly $2 million will go toward the hire of math specialists for elementary and middle school students to help combat the drop in test score results impacted by COVID-19. The district's enrollment for next school year is projected to grow by more than 300 students. The Caribbean nation of Trinidad and Tobago may be more than 3,000 miles away, but a Brooklyn Park resident has brought the taste of the Caribbean to the northwest suburbs. In this week's edition of Takeout Tuesday, Delane Cleveland introduces us to Grumpy Claude, whose food will make you feel anything but grumpy. 
It's just something that I love to do. <laughs> Bud Alkins is in the business of making people happy. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is ironic considering that the sign on his trailer refers to him as Grumpy. Who is the nicest person you'll ever meet, actually. So we uh, get the mail on that bun. It's a nickname he got at a previous job that stuck. But for the last six years, Grumpy Claude has traveled around the metro in his trailer, introducing Caribbean Eats to Twin Cities streets, or in this case, the Brooklyn Park Fleet Farm. My mom and dad, uh, they're from Trinidad. Um, that food was always around our home. So um, what I decided to do was, okay, uh, Minnesota didn't have a lot of Caribbean uh, places to go to. So what I decided to do was, bring the Caribbeans to Minnesota. His menu consists of familiar items like burgers and chicken wings, albeit with a little more seasoning for some added flavor. This is the stew right here. Then there's his signature item, the roti. It's a hand-rolled flatbread wrapped around a flavor-filled curry stew. It consists of chicken, uh, potatoes, garganza beans, herbs and spices all from the islands, all authentic. The item is becoming a fan favorite among his growing clientele in Brooklyn Park. It's not spicy like Thai food. Like, I really like the flavors in it. For now, Grumpy Claude's exists only in food truck form, but the hope is for him to one day open a standalone restaurant. Uh, it's uh, always been a passion of mine. In Brooklyn Park, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News.